All right, so welcome back to the channel. No, this is not an auction video. No, this is not a flip vehicle. This is a Coyote Comet vehicle. So we are at the shop though this morning. It is Friday morning. And uh, I went ahead and brought this piece in so I can modify this piece at the shop because uh, the house, uh, like I said in my last comment video this weekend, the weather's supposed to be crazy. So basically we're gonna be locked in the garage, the door's closed up, it's gonna be raining outside. And so any cutting or grinding I need to do is gonna need to be done inside. As you know, my garage is super clean, climate controlled, and the baby runs around in bare feet half of the time. So I decided to bring this messy project to the shop this morning while I'm here half day and go ahead and cut it. So let me show you what we got, what I'm thinking. So the water pump, okay, the Coyote water pump, uh, and we got some fittings. We're going to go to the metal yard and grab some aluminum pipe for that to go underneath the car this weekend. Uh, the plate that's on the front of the motor, the delete plate that's supposed to get a dash 20 inside of it. Um, I'm having a hard time coming up with a design um, that is budget friendly to that water pump I bought, you know, it's going to flow water out of each leg. So it's going to do one in and then two out. So what we're going to do is cut this up and modify this to build basically a new water pump to delete plate. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's get at it. Holy crap, that uh, that sucked. So here's what I learned. First off, if you're gonna do this, don't use a saw saw. Well, actually let's back up. First off, if you're gonna do this, beat the internals out of the pump. I was thinking, I went into this just kind of thinking that I was just gonna slice right through everything and um, it'd be nice and easy. And that wasn't the case. That shaft that's inside the water pump, is really hard okay so it made it through a little bit um you can see right there it made it through a little bit with the saw saw and it was actually almost all the way through but you're better just to go ahead and slice it like i did okay um i originally thought about you know well you probably should best to pump you know push the guts out and all that but i was like nah we'll just cut through it that ain't it the saw saw that ain't it okay uh it takes way too long for what I was, maybe it's just a blade I'm using. I'm using a, um, a 24 TPI blade. So it says for thin metal, but it shows a picture of an I-beam. I don't know, maybe that was my problem. Maybe I need more of a coarse one since it is a little metal. I know you can cut metal with like skill saw blades, uh, aluminum, not steel. Um, but the ticket was when I went back with the uh, cutoff wheel and just sliced right through it with the, the cutoff wheel. It made it a lot easier. The cutoff wheel is a lot more sketchy because you're in a lot of different places. And the saw saw, I kind of wanted to use a saw saw so that it would like cut straight through it. But the, um, the cutoff wheel went way faster. Let me flip you around. So you can see how thick this is in some places. So here's where I first, let's see here, started to make my cut, okay? Right here, that's wrong, okay? If you look, you're still way up inside of here, leaving all that not gonna open up, you know, the amount. So that's wrong. So what you wanna do is come back and make your cut, as you can see right here, closer to flush with your bolt holes, okay? So cut through uh, closer to your bolt holes. And what that's gonna do is give it so that you have all of this maximum space. So that was my first mistake is cutting to or second, third, whatever, many mistakes of cutting cutting through it too deep now this basically looks like the davis craig um you know adapter plate kind of if you look at theirs i'll drop a picture of it right here uh they sell a kit with the adapter plates and the lines and all that stuff um but again the this is more of a budget channel and i didn't want to do that so uh, but it does kind of resemble the adapter plate but i mean if you already have the water pump and you're just gonna throw it in the scrap bin anyway and trash it then why not cut it up and make an adapter plate out of it i'm not stoked with the amount that it weighs but i am about to go in here and grind some of these ears off like right here smooth the top out you know roll the edges so it'll take a little bit out but not a lot but it's um it's free that plate 
that MMR sells. I bought mine, like I said, on a deal um, with the single 20 AN. But if you go buy that plate, the plate is $100 for just the plate with the hole in the center. It's $100. So, you know, initially to get something like this, you're paying $100. Um, and then whatever fittings you choose, they add additional like 20, 40, 50 bucks on top of the 100 just for that uh, delete plate for the front of the block. So since you already have the water pump, you can literally just cut your water pump in half. This allows you to use the factory water pump O-ring. If you ever have a leak, you can just go to the parts store and get the factory O-ring. And then you can also, this allows you, you just weld a plate here. And now we're going to weld in our bungs to our plate. So I think we're going to put dual 12s, you know, after uh, more thinking last night and looking at some stuff and looking up some info and how we're using our other pump, it's going to work best for us instead of a single 20. Uh, basically being the Chevy pump comes out in two, then we'd have to transfer it into one. And if you start looking up options to get uh, two into one, you know, the cheapest you can do is two 12s into one 12, which is $40 for the Y, plus then you're feeding the motor with a uh, single 12. I want to feed the motor with at least a dash 20. A dash 20 is about an oh, inch on the inside of a dash 20. So a dash 12, uh, I believe, is like five eighths. Um, I could be wrong. I know I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I measured it last night. Dash 12 is like five eighths on the inside. So if you feed the motor with two dash 12s, um, you're essentially feeding the motor with an inch and a quarter, which is even bigger than a dash 20. So that's the reason why I made the call to come in this morning and cut this water pump. Um, and you can order the delete plate with the two dash 20s already in it if you go to MMR's website. But again, you're going to pay like 140 plus taxes and shipping. Um, you know you know just to get a plate that and, and since you already have this in the scrap bin why not just cut this in half weld a plate you know throw two bungs in it i think the bungs are gonna be about 15 dollars, and then we're gonna grab us some dash 12 nascar lines to basically come off the pump uh straight into there so the bad so into the motor will be fed with two dash 12s off the pumps and since we're using a chevy pump um and we're gonna come out uh saving money on the uh the end result um being we're we're making stuff work so here's what we're left with when everything's done and I went ahead and removed the o-ring off the back side and I'm thinking about going ahead and replacing it even though it looks good I just got to find it uh, I guess I'll call the part store I didn't see nothing under my search results on eBay real quick um, but yeah we're gonna put two dash 12 so one dash 12 in the center and one dash 12 over here so I just went ahead and put in the order for the dash 12s I got four dash 12 fitting bones like this for $16 off eBay so you can't go wrong if you already have a water pump you know and you you know to build this plate you could just cut down what you got so it's a little bit uh, heavy when we get it home um, and when I get done with this project I'm gonna weigh this one compared to the other one and see what the weight difference is um, but I mean, it's it's gonna save you a lot of money when the other plate, this piece right here, is a hundred dollars plus. I think it's twenty or forty dollars for the two uh, for the you know to add the two two bungs in there. And I just looked on eBay, and you can get a used water pump right now on eBay for twenty five dollars to your door, and then cut it in half if for some reason you don't have a water pump. But you should have a water pump. So uh, this might help somebody, or everybody might be like, this is an absolute waste of time. But for me, it's not a waste of time. It's perfect. And I went ahead and cleaned up a lot of it, took some metal out the sides of it, you know, smoothed out the insides, got rid of this hump that was in here. There was two humps in here, uh, smoothed it out so that it's just, you know, uh, hopefully more pleasing to the eyes a little bit. And then, of course, we're going to paint it up when we're done. And that will pull a little bit of weight out of it. So, um, but that's that. Got that done at the shop today. Glad I did it at the shop and not the house because this would have been a nightmare to do at the house. I made a huge mess with all of this aluminum uh, grinding and stuff. And, you know, I had the DA here because I took the sander across the top to pull, make this a flat plane. So at the house, I just have a regular wood sander. So it definitely helps doing this at the shop. But we're going to get this to the house and uh, move on with, uh, you know, the the comment and this is a dash 20 so if you wanted to do a dash 20 you could actually fit that down in there pretty freaking good and then you could do you another little one on this side if for some reason you wanted a dash 20 plus another inlet or whatever but i figured i would just go ahead and show you all that since i had a dash 20 in my hand or you could just plate it so i just left the metal yard looking for a piece of aluminum tubing to go on the uh, you know for to put a uh, 20 a in on the end of um, under the car that wasn't too heavy. I wanted thin wall. There's no reason to put that much weight underneath uh, Underneath the car and everything they have over there is kind of like thicker a little bit thicker 
So I'm not really happy with the weight of all their stuff, so I didn't get anything. I'm gonna go home and do a little more research and uh, possibly price out some uh, radiator hose on eBay and see what that would uh, what that would run. You know, maybe that's an option. I wasn't gonna run radiator hose under the car because of um, price. I've heard that it's uh, pretty expensive when you get that long, but maybe I'll be surprised. So we're going to brainstorm some more on some other ideas of how to heat up some linear feet to move water from the front of the car to the back of the car.